the Clearwater Tornadoes, and this is the Friday Night Blitz. Whoa! Pumped in Clearwater tonight. Welcome to the Friday Night Blitz. Dan Lucas, Paul Ryan, the playoffs are finally here. Playoffs? Put up or shut up, baby. <laughs> 42 Bay Area teams made it to the second season, each with eyes on the ultimate prize, a state title. That number likely close to have tonight as many local squads square off against one another. All right, let's kick it off in Class 7A, the big boys. Plant Panthers, a perfect 9-0 on the season, hosting Winter Haven, who got in on a, a three-way playoff. Blue Devils defense tough early. Marcus Pritchard with the first hit there on Dane Franzen on third down. Plant settles for a field goal. Late in the first quarter, Franzen now on third and goal. Gets in for the touchdown, 10-0 Panthers. Let's pick it up now in the second quarter. The Panthers score and score and score. They're still scoring. Uh, this was a third down play on the Blue Devils, 43. Franzen just wanted a first down. How about all, all the way to the end zone, 16 nothing at that point. Winter Haven quarterback William Tate, a nightmare first half. Several drops by his receivers. Then a pick six there. Egan Baber takes it in. Panthers reeled off 42 points, Paul, in the second quarter. In Plant, the second? Plant wins 59 to 6. Jeez. Next up for Plant, either Wiregrass Ranch or Lakeland. The Dreadnoughts fire the first shot across the bow. A.J. Davis is mayhem, and the Bulls don't have all-state insurance. <laughs> Davis rips off an 80-yard touchdown run sped up for your viewing pleasure. Lakeland on top, 8-0 in the first. That means it's time to get naughty. Always love to see that guy out there, but hold up. The ensuing kickoff lands in the hands of Jordan Miner, and Miner is set up for a major return How all fast the way to the crib. Nice quick. Wagrass Ranch within one. Not for long, though. That's because Lakeland's got a pretty good returner, too. Willie Baker, and Baker's got the oven set for 98 <laughs> yards, that is. Miles per hour. Yeah. Back-to-back -back kickoff returns for touchdowns, three straight scoring plays. Then after a 65-yard Davis run, put Lakeland in the red zone on its next possession. Holden Hotchkiss, the fade to James Robinson. The Knots go on to win this one, 43-20. Lakeland versus Plant next week in the regional semifinals. All right, let's move to Class 6A. Clearwater and Port Charlotte have a combined record of 17-1. Tornadoes, a perfect 9-0, but a fumble early in this one. Instead of a Clearwater touchdown, it's a Port Charlotte touchback. Uh, the Pirates punt, and here we go. Jacquez Jones, he does it all, outraces the coverage, and takes a little breather. Then that looks like a jog in the park for a 60-yard punt return. Easy game, baby. Yeah, 7 nothing Tornadoes. Pirates looking to regroup here. They go back on offense. Paul Barnes going deep. And this one is a mistake to Jatavius Bird. What do you mean a bird? The <laughs> bird is flying into Port Charlotte territory, and the Tornadoes are going to cash this one in Austin Day to Brandon Demeter for the touchdown. Clearwater moving on. Wins 27 to 16. All right, the playoffs, they look just as sweet from high above the field, thanks to Eagle 8 HD. Yeah, tonight a top-down <laughs> view of two huge matchups. Third-ranked Armwood beginning its march back to the state title game against Auburndale and the St. Petersburg Green Devils, hoping to continue their magical season by beating Tampa Bay Tech. Could they do it? Let's get to the choppa, our <laughs> Friday Night Blitz skylights. Flying in Eagle 8 HD over a dark Tampa, showing pride for Veterans Day. Playoff football in the air. First stop, Armwood High School, as the Hawks take on the Bloodhounds from Auburndale. And it's a defensive battle early. Jerome Ford has it and just can't get the corner. Bloodhound ball. Jaquette Giles gets caught, and he's pushed back into the end zone, but no safety. Auburndale must punt, and Moses Wells blocks it, and Armwood is in business. Brian Sneed makes a cut or two and gets inside the five. Sneed lowers his head and the boom. Touchdown Hawks. Cheerleaders flip out. Devin Black and the Hawks on the move. It's Brian Sneed time. He outruns some hounds and he's in again. Armwood goes for two and it's Sneed on the catch. Now fly past the nearly super moon for a super matchup with the St. Pete High Green Devils visiting the Tampa Bay Tech Titans. Quintrell Gardner, who takes it wide and cuts it upfield. He's down to the two, and it's Gardner again, takes it, and he's upended into the end zone. Titan band gets funky. Now, Jarquavius Johnson squeezes through a hole and rumbles for a gain. 
Johnson gets another crack, and he hits the seam for another good game for Tampa Bay Tech. Trent Wyatt pulls the old sleight of hand and kicks up some dirt, and he's going to score. Titans line up the kick, but it's a fake, and Levi Jackson punches it in for two. And that will do it for this week's playoff Eagle 8 HD Skylight. In Eagle 8 HD, Paul Amason, News Channel 8. How big was that two-point conversion? 48-45, Tampa Bay Tech wins in overtime. Huge win. Plant Lakeland game of the week next week. Time for a break. More Friday Night Blitz next. Calling it already. All right, Clearwater Central Catholic off to a great start this season in the top five all season long in Class 3A. Can they get over the hump? Well, there's only one way to find out. Uh, let's look at the video because we have some. 3A action, John Carroll, Clearwater Central Catholic, the Marauders marching through the fence. We pick up the highlights in the second half. This one's already out of hand. Rashad Stewart breaks the plane to make it 42-3 CCC. But the Rams don't quit. Nick Seldonio to Joey LeClaire. He's got hands like a concert pianist. So soft. <laughs> and this symphony concludes in the end zone. Seldonio to Justin Fink for the touch. Uh, I think it's not enough, though. The Marauders are moving on thanks to a 42-17 win over John Carroll. Uh, we have some powerhouses in Class 2A. This is one of them. Cambridge Christian hosting Admiral Farragut. Lancers take the opening kickoff and march right down the field. Caleb Young... Who's one of like five guys who plays quarterback on this team? He scored there to make a seven nothing. The Blue Jackets turn it over on their first possession. Three plays later, Young headed for the lawn chair seats again, fourteen nothing. Now Farragut gets it going. Keandre Miller, look at that strike to Zeon Roland. He gets in the end zone. Jackets down fourteen seven. Second quarter now. Aaron Pierre, just get behind the big boys, Aaron. They'll even grab you and push you in. It's twenty to seven. The point after is no good. Would that be costly? Miller. To Roland again. This makes it a six point game, but not enough. Cambridge pulls away to win it 38 to 14. All right, guys, time for another commercial break. More Friday Night Blitz on the other side of that break. All right, we're saving the best for last. Earlier in the show, we showed you uh, Armwood in Class 6A. The other side of that bracket, our game of the week, Hillsboro and Lake Gibson. Yeah, what a night. The Braves, 9 0 in the regular season. Uh, the Terriers, one blemish that lost to Armwood. Which team is moving on in the next round of the playoffs? Let's find out in our Friday Night Blitz Game of the Week. The late Gibson Braves come into this Game of the Week matchup with the stingy defense only giving up six points a game. So can the Terriers give them their first loss of the season? I don't know. So to the highlights we go. From the coin toss, right down to the last second of the game. Oh, baby, this game was rocking. But in the beginning, it was both squads' defense that took control of the game. But then in the second quarter, Caveras Thomas from the gun and, oh, my groceries, he slings it deep to a wide-open MJ Link. No one's going to catch him. Now it's the Terriers' turn, and Tyler Thomas rolls right and, woo! Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now the Terriers are back inside the red zone, and my man Duran Bell Jr. gets him with the okie doke, and it leaves the Braves secondary like they were doing the mannequin challenge. And just like the sun rises in the east, back comes Lake Gibson. But they would miss the extra point that would have tied the game. But late in the fourth quarter, and here comes Travell Jones, toting the rock high and tight. Terriers biting at his ankle with all their might, but Jones would carry them to the finish, and the Braves would go on to win it and stay undefeated at 10-0. Anthony Allred, News Channel 8 Sports. All right, how about a little Friday Night Blitz college style? Florida State hosting Boston College. Uh, Dalvin Cook chasing the FSU career rushing record. Needed 127 tonight. He got 108. Scored a touchdown here. Knowles win it 45-7. Cook needs, let's do the quick math, 19 yards next week against Syracuse. I'm a betting man. I think Money's on Cook. I think he gets it. All right. One more play for you. The play of the week. For the first time ever, it's not one play. It's two plays. Please. We go back to Lakeland. Back-to-back -back kick return for touchdowns. Jordan Miner gets the first one for Wiregrass Ranch. Looked like this game was going to be competitive at that point, but the momentum stifled immediately. Willie Baker, the butcher. Baker, the candlestick maker. 98 <laughs> yards to the crib. Sped up because we don't have time to show you the whole highlight. Both of those are plays of the week. Congratulations to the Lakeland Dreadnoughts moving on to take on Get plants. Down.
in the regional semis Some next week. Some contenders for uh, Team of the Week here. A good show tonight. Congratulations to Jesuit for being our Team of the Week last week. Hey, shout out to USF beating FAMU tonight, 84-73 in the men's hoop opener. Most points in an opener since 02 tonight, Tampa Bay.